All right, so this starts, a, I guess, a series of lectures. You're watching these online, so I don't know what to call these. But a series of lectures on problem definition, right there. Um, problem definition, especially for engineering design, is, is incredibly important because um, Engineering design is, is basically, we talked about this in class, a method to solve incredibly complex problems, right? And if you're going to solve incredibly complex problems, you need a very systematic way of going about it. So when we talk about problem definition, right, what we mean is we need to define the needs of our customers. find the needs of our customers, right? And we have to do this before we can even start thinking about solutions. Before we can even start thinking about solutions, right? Um, so the basic steps of this, basic steps of this are, one, the first thing we need to do is identify customers. Identify customers. And by identifying the customers, I mean all of the customers. This is harder than it seems, and we'll, we'll talk about that after we're, we're done listing all the individual steps. Once we've figured out who all of our customers are, once we figure that out, we're going to identify, identify all of their individual needs, right? Um, this is going to involve actually quite a bit of research, right? This isn't something you can just do sitting at, sitting in a hammock with the sun on you and your eyes closed. No, this is something you have to actually research. This, uh, look up statistics. You have to do surveys. Um, actually talk to people in focus groups. This is, this is, that's difficult work. Three, we need to benchmark, right? Benchmark. What this means is um, already we got to figure out already in place solutions, right? Existing solutions. What what you know? Once we've identified our needs, what are the what uh, what other products are out there that that maybe partially meet those needs. Um, ultimately, these are all products that will compete with your eventual eventual solution. This, this is very important because it helps us in our next step, which is for we need to establish our engineering functions. Establish our engineering functions. Our engineering functions are informed by our benchmarks, right? What other people have done before us kind of helps tell us uh, reasonable engineering functions. Um, it comes from our needs, right? So once we figured out what our customers need, needs they might not even mention, right? Um, this will help us figure out our engineering functions. Those are benchmarks too, come and help us figure out our engineering functions. We're not quite done yet because just simply figuring out our engineering functions is not not enough. Um, the, our engineering functions, which tell us size, strength, uh, how fast it has to move if it moves, things like that, not all of those are equally important, right? In fact, some of them probably are almost irrelevant, while some of them are absolutely vital. So, in order to figure out, figure out kind of the weighting we need to give, right? How much weight to give to each engineering function, how much importance to give to each engineering function. We need to link our needs and our engineering functions. Right? So hopefully as part of our research, we've we've figured out what of our needs are more important and less important. We're going to link our needs to our engineering functions.
right? So if it turns out that the most important thing for customers is, I don't know, what are we, what are we worried about today? Um, well, eventually we're going to talk about toys to put in a uh, McDonald's Happy Meal. So why don't we stick with that? So let's say we find out that our, our most important need for our customer, which is a little kid, is that it looks freaking cool, which means it has bright colors, then one of our engineering functions is going to be vivid paint, right? Good paint. And that's more important than, I don't know, anything else. So actually having it do anything. It could just be just a hunk of plastic with bright paint. And that would be better than something that unfolds and does something neat. So we have to link our needs to our engineering functions, right? And all of this, all of these parts, end up in a document. Well, it doesn't have to be a document, but we're going to put it all together into something that's called a product design specification, right? Product design specification. This doesn't tell us any possible solutions, right? This right here is just fully defining the problem. The who. Who, do, who is going to buy this product? What do they want? What does that mean in terms of... Uh, engineering targets or engineering functions, right? Um, we're going to put, and then we have to decide how important each of those engineering functions are. And all that together is a product design specification, right? So not only, if, I mean, if you're making products, it's actually, you know, product design specification makes total sense. But even if you're not working on products, like I have a, a friend who works for a, um, a programming company actually is a programmer and they do a lot of work in China and um, one of the most important things is sending an experienced design engineer over there so that they can make a good design specification right so the customer wants a certain um, program for a control system they need to know all the parameters of that control system exactly who is using the control system, what they need, the engineering functions of that control system, and if you don't fully specify those, your product is not going to be as good, right? So even if you're doing engineering, even if what you're selling is engineering, not just a product, but actual engineering expertise, you need to make sure you have good design specifications. All right. Next, next I'm going to stop this video now, see how that turned out. But the next thing we're going to talk about is... Identifying customers, how to do that.